In this video, I'll help you get up and running with building works. I'll take you through creating your first project and entering the details of the project. When you launch building works, you'll find yourself looking at the home screen. From here, you can create new projects and open existing ones. There are also links to some help topics, which you might find useful. To get started, you'll need to create a project. A project may consist of just one job, for example, an extension or an individual house, or multiple jobs, as in the case of a development with multiple houses. Click New on the left-hand menu. The project option will already be selected. There's also an option to create a project by copying an existing one. You may find this useful in the future. For now, I'll select the project option and tick the tick boxes next to the items you want to include in your project. Let's assume we want the project to consist of both a drawing and an estimate. If you select Drawing, BuildingWorks will automatically include an estimate, but you can have an estimate without a drawing. Once Drawing is ticked, you can select a drawing template from the drop-down box. The template you select will determine the page size, scale and orientation and whether or not it includes a notes block. I'm going to select the A1 1-50 plain page template. Don't worry though, you can change the scale and page size later on from within the drawing module if you need to. Once estimate is ticked, you can select a labour productivity profile. The labour productivity profile you select will set the labour allowances for each of the tasks within your estimate. The extension and renovation labour productivity profiles generally allow more time for each task to be completed. You can customise the labour allowance for each type of labour from within your estimate. I'm going to select the New Build Labour Productivity Profile. By default, your project will open in the Project Details screen. If you untick this tick box, Building Works will launch in the drawing if you have one, otherwise it will launch in the estimate. Click Create Project to get started. After a moment, you'll find yourself looking at the Project Details screen. Take a few moments to familiarise yourself with the screen. Depending on the version of building works you're running, the project detail screen may appear slightly differently and you may not be able to access every module. From the main window, you can click on the large buttons to access the different modules. The Project Explorer sits on the left hand side of the screen. You can use the Project Explorer to navigate your way around building works, for example, moving between the drawing and estimate modules. The Project Explorer is accessible from every screen, although you can minimise it to make more space by clicking on the arrow at the top. You can then navigate around building works by clicking project on the bottom left of the screen and then clicking an option on the menu which pops up. Let's expand the project explorer for now by clicking on the arrow once again. At the top of the screen is the ribbon. You'll see different tabs with different buttons depending on which screen you're looking at. Let's start by adding the client details. Click the add button next to the client drop down box. The Add Contact dialog box pops up. Click on the dots next to Full Name and enter the client's name into the various fields. Click the Tab key to move between the input boxes. And once you've entered the name, click OK. Next, complete any other fields, such as the address and phone numbers, by clicking into each input box and typing in the relevant details. Once you're happy with the details you've entered, click OK. If the client address and the site address are the same, as is often the case for an extension or renovation, ensure the Use Client Address for Site Address tick box is ticked to save yourself the effort of entering the details twice. Otherwise, untick the tick box and click the Edit button next to Site Address. Type each line of the address into the appropriate box and once you're finished, click OK. For now, I'm going to click Cancel and select the option to use the client address for the site address. Your project details will now automatically appear in various documents in the software, such as the customer quote and bill of quantities. Now let's save the project. It's a good idea to save your project at regular intervals. If you press the Save as Project button, you can number your project each time. Then if you make a mistake or need to make a change, it will be much easier to retrace your steps. 
click the Save As Project button. It's the one with the down arrow. Find a suitable location to save the file. Enter a project name. And then click Save. Now you've saved the project and given it a name. The project name is displayed at the top of the Project Explorer. Now you can click Drawing on the Project Explorer to open your drawing and start your design. Alternatively, you might want to navigate to the estimate and take a look at your profit markup on the estimate dashboard before you begin your estimate. Now it's your turn. Jump right in. Create a project by clicking New, then Project and selecting the modules you want to include. Choose a drawing template and label productivity profile as necessary, then click Create Project. Use the Add button to insert your client's name and address on the project detail screen. If the site address is the same as the client address, ensure the Use Client Address for Site Address tick box is ticked. Otherwise, enter the site address by clicking the Edit button. Finally, save your project by clicking the Save as Project button.